understand this. When people are, when a lot of people are coming to the dealership and we've asked and pulled this out to thousands of customers, they have an internal self-talk and they say, you know what? I'm going out and I'm just looking. I'm not buying anything today. And little does, sell, does a salesperson know when you, you, when you bring up those trigger words, buy it today, it triggers them to think about, uh, 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 I said I wasn't going to buy anything today. So now we're going to try to force them to go against their internal self-talk and buy today. No, they will resist you like the plague, okay? Because you're making them go against their own internal uh, self, self-talk. self And that's an uncomfortable feeling. And you know how people feel about salespeople, especially ones at the dealership. The last thing they want to do is have to admit to themselves or go home and tell somebody that they were forced to do something that they didn't want to do. They will even resist you if you have the vehicle they want and the price point they want, they'll resist it strictly because we've used the wrong verbiage. Words have power. And in sales, everything you say has got to be intentionally leading you to the next step. When you're in greeting, you shouldn't be focused on closing the sale. Greeting, you should be focused on, if you're selling anything, selling them on the next step, which is sitting down and giving you the information and allowing you to qualify. And then from that, if you're going to sell them on anything, it's selling them on you and them working together to select the appropriate vehicle. And then next, as you can see, it's only selling them on the next step. So every word you say, you have to make sure that it is not counterproductive. So think about how many times you may have asked a customer a closed in question, but then felt like they were being tight lipped when in reality, they did exactly what they were supposed to do. Gave us a one word answer or a two word answer or a three word answer. Mm -mm. So as opposed to closed in questions, you want to ask open in questions. I just wanted to make sure that I address that. And if you look at all of the questions that we use here to make sure you have all the information. So that way in the future, when you're ready, you can make the best decision. What exactly is it that you like to think about? Or Mr. Customer, now this is where you kind of going into a little bit of a story and you're associating them so they don't feel alone. Others have felt the same way. So it's like, hey, Mr. Customer, hey, John. When somebody says that they want to think about it, you know, it usually means that they're either not interested or they are interested, but not quite sure that they're ready to move forward. Which one of those is it could be for you? Um, I'm, I'm just not quite sure. Awesome. Now, when my other customers have said that they weren't sure about moving forward, it typically came down to one of three things. Either it wasn't the, didn't, wasn't the right fit didn't have the right features, or it was the finance. And you have, you know, which one of those is it for you? You didn't say, is it one of those? No, that's a closing question. We're going to assume, hey, tell me, which one of those is it for you? And if you sit back and be quiet and keep that pen in your hand, looking down at that sheet of paper, because you should be taking notes, looking down at that sheet of paper, like as if you're anticipating, expecting them to say something, a lot of times they will. They will. And you want to learn to use what's called layered questions. Well, when you ask the question and they give a response, there's another question you can ask to help them elaborate more. So let's just say, um, you, you know, you say, um, you know, which one of those is it for you? Oh, man, you know what? It's the finances. Really? So tell me, um, you know, where were you hoping to be financially? As opposed to saying, oh, OK, well, it's the finances. Well, let me see what I can do. No. Where were you hoping to be financially? And when you say financially, um, what are you speaking of specifically? Is that the monthly budget or the price of the vehicle? You know what I mean? Get them to dig deep. And if your fear is that you will lose the deal, you don't have a deal yet anyway. And if you're going to lose a deal, it might as well be because you went all out to try to learn, understand, and to help this person rather than being a minimalist and failing to help them at all. Okay, so don't be afraid to ask these questions. Think about this. These people are making a substantial investment. And salespeople feel like, you know, I don't want to get too personal. I don't want to ask personal questions. Yes, you do. You want to know who's going to be riding in it. What's their name? You want to know if there's going to be little people in it. What's their name? What's their ages? What's their relation? Why? So that when you're explaining the vehicle features, when you're talking about this vehicle as opposed to saying you and your significant other or you and your kids, you can use specific names that are relevant to them, familiar to them, which helps them paint a better and a clearer mental picture, please know that in sales, every word you say 
is helping that customer create a mental picture. Every question you ask is helping this customer create a mental picture. And with the assumption of ownership, when you can get your customers to assume ownership mentally, it makes it that much easier for them to make that smart, safe buying decision to do business with you. So don't rush. People want to know that the person they're dealing with appreciates them, wants to learn more about them. This is why so many people feel the automotive industry sucks. They feel like they're just a number and nobody really cares. They just want to get their business. That shouldn't be the fact. This individual or these individuals are helping you be able to facilitate a specific lifestyle. Because without them, you don't earn. So it should be genuine. And how we react and how we respond to these customers. And we should genuinely be wanting to ask them questions to learn more and better understand where they're coming from. Okay? Now, the next one. Did you know, according to a recent Forbes article, 58% of customers will pay more for better customer service? As the automotive market gets more competitive, sales training is more important than ever. This is where Brian Maxwell comes in. For over a decade, Brian Maxwell provides sales training for some of the biggest dealer groups in the country and for manufacturers such as Ford, Chevy, Toyota, and many others. Brian has also trained over 10,000 automotive sales associates worldwide. Brian Maxwell's value is in the fact that he provides real-world, simple to follow, and easy to apply sales training to your team. His training helps sales teams convert consistently with higher profit margins and how to leverage social media to generate qualified leads. He does this by applying all aspects of learning, utilizing classroom training, role playing and one on one evaluations. This allows your sales teams to hear, see and apply selling methods that flat out work. Knowing that results and profits are the only way to establish a long term working relationship. Brian Maxwell's focus is results and profit oriented. So if you'd like to supercharge the customer experience, your sales team's production, and your bottom line, schedule a time for a consultation with Brian Maxwell today.